Hello, my name is Ash. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be running through how to do sidechain compression within FMOD. Um, so it's pretty much the same concept as if you're doing this in a door like Pro Tools or Logic or whatever, um, but it's just uh, just a little bit different to set up and um, I found this a bit challenging to actually learn or find information on. I um, found some of the other tutorials were a bit vague so I thought I'd do actually like I figured out for myself and I thought I'd actually do my own. Um, so basically I have some tracks here so I'll, sh I'll show you a, a few different ways of actually setting this up. So on here, I've got uh, some music tracks and I've got some Atmos tracks. This is uh, the ones that I did for a game called Mind State. Uh, so basically what I wanna do in here is, uh, if I quickly play this so you can hear. So yeah, so I've got some music and I've also got an Atmos track with like some birds and some wind and whatnot, but the birds aren't really coming through um, uh, because of that music. So it'd be nice to actually have some sidechain compression to uh, duck the music down when those birds come in. So what we can actually do, uh, this is method one, uh, what I can actually do, is say if I own if it was only for uh, these tracks here that I wanted to do it with, say if all of these were fine and I only wanted to do these tracks, I would click on this event right here. Um, go to volume, add modulation, sidechain. Yeah. Uh, so basically, you have your threshold, so this is um, the uh, lowest level. So basically you want whatever your side chain uh, track will be, uh, if it's going over that amount, that is the amount uh, that is going to trigger the actual compression. Same as up here, but if say if it goes anything above here, uh, will release the compressor. So I don't want to do that. Plus I already know that the sounds on there are pretty quiet. So I'm going to have this pretty low. I think it was actually around about 42. Um, going to have a pretty fast attack and release just so it's not really holding. And then we'll figure out the amount in a second. So I'll just go over to my Atmos track now. I'm going to add a new sidechain. So there it is there. Then I'll just have to go back to this one. Go just right clicking on the actual compressor, sidechain inputs and go to Atmos because it's on that track there. And so when I do, so when I start playing, I'll just bring down the actual, or bring up the amount uh, as to how much I want to actually compress it. So that was a little bit of overkill, but that's just to um, give you the idea of actual, of really hearing that music ducking underneath the birds and the wind. But anyway, let's get rid of that for the moment. Let's go on to a, another method. I probably didn't have to delete that sidechain, but that's all right. If we actually go into, well, we can either leave it in this view and we can put, I'll pop a sidechain back on there. Um, this ne next method is if we wanted to have ducking along all of these tracks. So that, that last one, that was if you only wanted to do one, but this is for if um, you got something that runs along both tracks uh, that are going to need sidechain compression the entire time. So I've got my sidechain on there, then I go to here and I just add. So this time I don't actually add a sidechain compressor I just add a normal compressor 
Um, this could also be done if you're in this view, same thing. Um, that view is kind of handy to, um, cause that is basically the same view that you'll have in your actual mixer, which I'll go through momentarily. Okay, so got here, let's go insert sidechain. So I've right clicked on there, insert sidechain, uh, compressor on, oh wait. Yes, oh, sorry. So you right click on these, this sidechain here and you go to insert sidechain, compressor on music. Uh, this should be the one. Might just double check in case. Let's do it again. There we go. So let's have a bit of a high ratio. One is, one is to four and a half, that's fine. Um, let's go fast attack and release again. Why not? Let's turn on the side chain and then we'll play and we'll bring down the threshold. So you can hear that compression there. The great thing about that is that you can actually see uh, the compression, um, the gain reduction on the compressor, which is very handy. Um, yeah, so let's get rid of that and we'll go on to the next thing. Let's, uh, so basically you can do that same thing if you were in the mixer. Um, but you would have to make, say I've got those other ones running on the same event, which is Atmos Music. Um, so this would be more like, say if I had maybe this water rising sound, let's put that into a new group. Um, it's gonna call it water. Uh, and Atmos Music, reroute into new group. I'm going to just call it music. So let's say we wanted to duck the music when the water um, runs. So let's go to music, check on a compressor. Um, go to water, do sidechain, sidechain on music. Um, so I'll probably do the same thing. Just have a, I might have a bit of a slower release on this cause it's a longer one and we'll figure out the threshold in a second. Um, so here, uh, I'll start the music off and then we'll open up a new window and we'll play the water track. Yeah, so sometimes it can just take a few goes 
uh, just to get that threshold right. I thought that <laughs> my threshold was wrong, but I hadn't actually brought up the ratio yet, uh, which was the issue, but you could hear that uh, compression in the end. So that's just another way of doing it. Um, so for this last method, I'm not actually going to be doing compression per se, but it's just another way of actually ducking. So I'm actually gonna open up a new project. Um, go to this one here. And that other one is probably still open, so I'll close that. I uh, don't need to save that. Um, so, in this one, I've actually got one set up. So basically, in this one, uh, I have actually done a video uh, on this FMOD session, if you wanna check it out. I'll hopefully put a link in the description for you. Uh, but basically, this game, it'll have some music, but then uh, the player has the ability to rewind time briefly. So I'm going to have a rewind sound playing um, which, and I want the music to duck under that so that it sounds like the music is rewinding. Uh, so what we want to do for that is if I go to my mixer again, I've already got some routing set up. So I've got everything either going through uh, my effects or I've got it going through my music. But then I have one event, which I call Music Rewind, which is going through uh, this one called reverse, I think, or rev. Um, and then what we can actually do is create a snapshot. So I've already created one here, but I'm gonna create a new one for the sake of this video. Uh, so we go new overriding snapshot. I'm going to call this one a rewind. Now, until you do anything with the snapshot, um, then all of your faders are going to look like that, which basically means that they haven't saved. So what I wanna do is I don't care about these, they can stay where they are because they're all going to be routed through um, some master buses anyway, so they don't matter. Now these are the guy, uh, actually all of these can be full as well, that's all right. So when the rewind plays, I think I wanna drop the effects maybe a little bit, so 10 dB, and then I wanna really drop the music. I don't mind it being like a little bit in there, but for the most part, I want it gone. So we've made a snapshot called Rewind. Uh, so I might, inside this folder, I'm going to create a new event. I might call that Rewind Music. Um, and then I might just have to go back to my mixer. So I've got music rewind. I'm gonna pop that on through that group. Very important. Okay, so in here I am going to look up my assets and I am going to make a multi-sound. So I'm gonna get a bunch of tracks that are reversed which I have made previously. Let's get a bunch of those, gonna pop them in and that'll create a multi-sound. Uh, brilliant. I might actually just check how long that is. Not very long at all. So let's shorten that up because I want, when I'm gonna add a snapshot, I want it to match. Uh, the timing of that track. So I can get rid of that one now. So that's just going to be the, the music. Uh, this is going to be the snapshot. Uh, so I'm going to right click on that track and I'm going to add a snapshot. So I've got one called rewind, which is the one that I want. And I want to make it the same length. Now, the other thing to do is so basically what this is gonna do is that when this event is called, it's going to play that rewind track or you know, one of those mm, uh, sounds that I've got in here. Uh, and it's also going to duck the music and the effects, which is in there. But I want this to be a bit smoother. So 
uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into rewind. Uh, down the bottom here, you can see there's an intensity knob. I'm gonna right click on there and add automation. So I'll just add a, a bit of a fade in, a bit of a longer fade out. That should be fine. So yeah, so when I call this, it's gonna duck the music and effects and then it's going to play that rewind track, but it's going to kind of fade in and kind of fade out. So let's give that a go. Let's open up another window. So we can go to game music. Uh, that music should be fine. Let's play a bit of that. And there you have it. So as I said, that wasn't actually side chain compression that on that one, but it is just another method that I thought I'd show you on how you can actually duck um, one track under another when, yeah, track, ducking one track when another is played. Uh, and that about wraps up this video. So until next time, cheers.